A new study finds the people of pre-colonial Puerto Rico did not disappear entirely as previously believed. Historians believed the indigenous tribe called the Tainos were completely eradicated after Europeans arrived to the island during the 15th century. But now that's not the case. Researchers have found three genomes from ancient skeletons living in the DNA strands of living Puerto Ricans. With me now to explain this important discovery is one of the geneticists on the project, Maria Nieves Colon. Good to see you, Maria. Hi, thanks for having me. So I'm fascinated by this story. I had always been told, and I have family uh, from Haiti, I had always been told that uh, the Tainos were completely eradicated after Europeans arrived to the Caribbean islands. So explain to our audience uh, why these results are so important uh, to you and, of course, to not just the people of Puerto Rico, but all the people in the Caribbean who uh, would have had Tainos living on some of those islands. Yeah, this is a very common story, actually, that we hear throughout the Caribbean. Um, and it stems from interpretations of the writings that European colonizers left behind. They talk about people on these islands being uh, wiped out or dying out pretty quickly after colonization. But that idea kind of um, bumps up against oral histories and stories that people tell on the islands of having, for instance, an indigenous great-grandmother or carrying cultural traditions that have a native origin into the present. So and what our study, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, what our study looked at was the genomes of the ancient population to try to understand whether or not there was some genetic continuity that went hand in hand with the cultural continuity that we also see. And you've spent 10 years doing that, working on this research, um, which is remarkable. So what are some of the biggest discoveries you were able to make over the course of your research? Yeah, so we found two main things with our study. We looked at the genetics of about 124 ancient people that lived in Puerto Rico, um, at least 1,000 to 600 years before um, European contact. And we found first that there was a genetic connection between these ancient people and present day indigenous communities in the Amazon, which suggests that it was Amazonian people who initially kind of peopled the islands of the Caribbean. And we also found there was a partial genetic continuity between them and present day Puerto Ricans. And I say partial because we did also find a lot of genetic diversity that was present in the past that isn't present today. So clearly there was a decline. But the fact that we found three sequences that persisted into the present day suggests that this wasn't a complete genetic extinction. That's fascinating. And I had always long wondered uh, where the Taino actually came from. So the idea or the hypothesis that they originated um, in what is present day Brazil is, is also really, really interesting. Um, what it, did, did the climate in Puerto Rico and in the Caribbean uh, make it difficult to analyze uh, the DNA? Yeah, well, that's part of the reason why it took so long. <laughs> So the same conditions that make the Caribbean a beautiful place for vacation, the warmth and the humidity, make it possibly the worst place for DNA preservation. So ancient DNA in general is always degraded and fragmented because we're working with genetic material that has been in um, bones or teeth for thousands, sometimes hundreds of years. And when it's really hot, that degradation just becomes faster. So in order to deal with those issues, we had to work in extremely clean conditions. So we would take the skeletal remains and we would analyze them in a clean lab. And then we would wear these spacesuits that sort of protect the samples from our own skin and hair so we don't contaminate the samples. And we also have to use um, cutting edge technology for sequencing these genomes. So for determining the A's, T's and C's, we have to use these very large and expensive machines and that kind of technology just wasn't available 10 years ago. So that's part of the reason why it took, took us such a long time to do. Hmm. Um, and, you know, so the other thing that I'm sort of intrigued by is humans have, modern day humans have been on this planet a relatively short period of time when you compare the age of the planet and you compare the age of some species of animals who have been here for many millions of years. I wonder why there was never a study done of, in, of people now living in the Caribbean in addition to Puerto Rico and some other countries to discover whether or not the Taino may have uh, 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 mixed with the population of either uh, colonial Europeans or even Africans who were brought to some of these 
these islands, and that DNA would be you would be able to figure you would be able to see that DNA in modern day genetic testing. But is, has that never been the case? Yeah, there's been previous research, but most of it has been done with present day populations. So like Puerto Ricans that live are living now, like myself or my family, would get sampled and we would look at their genetic diversity. And as you said, we would find that there is a mix between Native American um, genomes of Native, Native American ancestry and African and European ancestry. But the question that we weren't able to answer through those approaches was how much of that Native American component stems from the island's ancient inhabitants versus coming from Native peoples that came later on, perhaps relocated through the process of colonization or something like that. Um, so we did have previous research in that, it's just that it was different in focus. Really fascinating. So how does your discovery now alter the way we think about the history of Puerto Rico? Well, um, for me personally, I think it gives voice to communities that were marginalized and misrepresented in the historical record. So by integrating the ancient DNA with archaeology and also examining um, the historical record, we can sort of paint a more complete picture. It's as if it's as if we had a puzzle and we were missing some pieces, and this work allows us to have a much clearer image of that puzzle because we can add one more piece to it. And it also tells us that some of these oral histories, some of these cultural traditions that people have must also be considered as sources of evidence when we ask research questions about the past. Mm. And uh, so I guess uh, after spending 10 years doing this uh, fascinating <laughs> study, what is next for you? Well, um, I'm currently collaborating with other people to expand this research to look at other islands in the Caribbean. We would like to obtain higher resolution data and data from many other ancient communities so that we can see if these patterns replicate in Haiti or in Cuba or in other places in the region. And we're also looking at expanding sampling across um, across the Americas so we can have a much better reference point when we're analyzing the ancient genomes of the Caribbean to other populations. That's really, really fascinating stuff. And where can people find uh, your just completed research? Yeah, so we posted a preprint of our manuscript on BioArchive, which is a server um, on the internet. And we can also, um, or people can also access our study through Twitter. Um, it's all posted on our, my Twitter account. So. What's your Twitter handle? Um, at MitoPR. All right, awesome. Thank you, Maria Nieves Colon. We really appreciate it. And come back and tell us uh, as you update the study uh, what more you've learned. We'd love to hear it. Thank you for having me.